this is the follow-up to our previous one, uh, NEA, AQA, Design and Technology. Uh, I'm looking at the 2018 brief, which was um, encouraging healthy living, I believe. And so far we've talked about doing A01. We looked at section A, which was identifying and investigating design possibilities. And that was worth 10 marks. And what I said at the beginning of that one is that that builds into the second part of section B, which is producing a design brief and specification, uh, which gives us another 10 marks. So the whole of A01 is actually 20 marks. Okay, quite important to get right, particularly because it sets us up for getting the maximum marks out of the further three in A02, which is all about designing and, and making, really. So that's a that's a critical bit um, and when you evaluate at the end if your specification and your original intentions are good you can get the maximum marks there so it really although these aren't massive marks by doing this correctly you set yourself up really well for the remaining task okay so we'll just move on more I'm not going to go through the design uh, criteria the assessment criteria for this because that was on the previous video um, but what's important is it's all about justifying and giving good reasons. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Specifically for we've got a target market. Remember what I'm saying to you is I'm giving you some information here. This is not necessarily as detailed as you would do in your particular workshop or, or design studio. Um, and this target market in particular is a little bit vague for for me, but it's a starting point for some further investigations that I'll do later on. Uh, I looked at some existing products and I gave myself some next steps. And then I got to this point where, um, before I do my design brief and my specifications, so to finish that first section, um, I'm doing some research, I'm really defining what the problem is, and I'm defining that by creating some research that helps me to make some genuine decisions. And to do that, I've got two lots of primary research and uh, two sources of secondary research. So my primary research was my uh, survey that I did by asking um, one of my target market, which was a, a young professional mother, um, what she enjoyed, particularly thinking about that kind of whole cooking idea that we came up with on the previous video. Um, that was a 10 point questionnaire. I always think it's worth giving two possible answers or three possible answers in this case um, because if you find something really interesting you can always do a follow-up survey or a follow-up investigation but by giving yourself some quite closed questions in the first instance it gives you a direction to look at all right um, I'm just going to give myself a highlight for a second so um, I've said what I've done, I've done some investigation about healthy cooking, because this is all about health, developing healthy lifestyles, or encouraging healthy lifestyles. Um, I've found my target market with three children, um, and I've asked her opinion. Um, she told me, so she told me, this is not me making it up, um, keeping the kids safe, organized, and she was nervous when they were using sharp equipment. So that gives me some really clear guidance about what I'm going to do. and then making a mess was a problem okay um, she knew that her daughter Lottie really wanted to cook and that she'd mentioned a toolbox as having given her cooking kit in she quite liked um, I then did some research using the internet and that proved that there was a need for young people to learn to cook I got that from two sources one was the BBC good food guide the other one was about children in care and how important it is to bring um, those particular children up with um, good cooking habits it's important to bring any children up with good cooking habits, frankly. Um, and because that has an impact throughout their entire life. So there's two sources of information up there. Now, what I've done here that, that I think is quite important is I've actually copied the um, the website addresses into there. It's a bit like writing a bibliography at the end of an essay or something. I've said where I've got that information from. So my primary research is a survey um, of the mother. And I then asked this young lady here, Lottie, what she thought and she gave me some information about being messy and she wanted her toolbox and then um, when I was asking her mum uh, she's sort of being messy and being nervous so I've sort of summarized that there so that's my primary research I've proved that there's a real need for this product 
I then did a little bit more research, talks about talks to people about what they what they cooked with, and um, I thought it was important that I understood what I actually needed to produce for the kids to cook with. So, you know, absolutely standard equipment would be a mixing bowl, spoons, some scales, rolling pins, chopping boards, butter knives usually, wooden spoons, whisks, baking tins, and cookie cutters. Um, in the case of Lottie and her mum, actually there were some sharp knives that, that were being used as well. So that might might fall into it. So I've got a really good understanding now. If I look at that first set of assessment criteria, I've got a good understanding about my target market. I've got a good understanding about what the problem is. I've evidenced that with some research. So I'd be able to get some, some pretty substantial marks for it. Again, the more evidence and justification and reasons you can give, the higher your marks are. If you're just listing things, you just said it needs to be this, it needs to be that, without giving um, reasons why you're going to get the lowest possible mark for just be careful about that write and write more give evidence explain describe okay now we're on to the the second set of 10 marks okay so the 10 marks are for producing a design brief and a design specif specification okay so very briefly design brief is the instruction it's the call to action um, for um, a company to give to a designer or a client to give to a designer or engineer to, to create product. The specification is then as detailed a list of criteria as you can possibly make that you can follow when you're making your product. It's like a tick list. Have I done this? Does this work? Do I meet my, my requirements? And so the more detailed that list is, the more successful your product is likely to be. Now if you change from that specification, which you might do, um, that would need really good justification, really good reasons, and that would have to be based on evidence. So research is ongoing. So anyway, let's just talk about what a what a nine to ten answer is. Okay, comprehensive. If you remember, that means thorough. That means detailed. Justified. That means giving reasons why. Okay, and they're focusing on the user and client needs. Okay, and remember always link to the context selected. So the brief that we were given, the context we were given um, last year was. Uh, encouraging healthy lifestyles that's the one that I'm modeling this on so I would always be relating it back to that okay um, specification with a high level of justification okay and it has to fully inform subsequent design stages and what that means is that your specification guides helps you make decisions with your designing at various points okay if we look at the next mark band down that's that word good again we've got detailed um, but again, it's all about clients' needs, it's about justifying your answers, it's about justifying your answers, and it's linking to the needs of the client user. Okay? If you don't do that, the word adequate really means that's probably where you're just doing it in a little bit of a list and you're not giving reasons why very much. Okay? So I'll lead you through how we produce a specification on and brief on the next page. Okay, so quite a lot to look at here. I've summarized what I've done. And I've summarised what I'm going to do. My computer to catch up with me. Okay, so in this section, I've talked about what I've what I've been doing. Okay, I've described why I know there's a problem, um, and I'm, what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to check with my intended user, and I'm going to check with them to see as I go along, see if it's working out. Then I wrote my design brief, which is this one here. Okay, and I do that again. It's a call to action. This is what I'm going to do. So, designer make a prototype kitchen organiser. Don't know what that is yet. It helps children between the ages of 5 to 10. That's my target market. And it's about cooking with the parents. The product will need to make it easy to work hygienically and safely. Okay, it will be easy to use, so it encourages people to use it regularly. I actually should probably write there um, to encourage healthy um, lifestyles, which was the, the context from the exam board. So, a bit of explanation here, design brief here. Okay, then we're going to come on to this specification, which I'll show you slightly larger on the next page. Um, I think it's worth looking at this next steps in a minute as well. We'll come we'll come back to this section. Okay, so writing a specification, you will need to create a table um, in your portfolio of evidence, however you're doing that, and you need to have a list of things that your product is going to do, and at the very least. You need to have the reasons why that's important. Again, you might be told to do something slightly different by whoever you're, um, is giving you your kind of guidance on this. Um, but we have a list of criteria, 
list of justification and then what I've added into mine is some testing how I'm going to check that that's working out okay right so I broadly based this on access FM aesthetics cost customer size environment safety function materials um, I've had I've, I've slightly jiggled it around a little bit but but it's, it's broadly there okay so aesthetics what it's going to look like um, I've said it's going to be modern and I've said it's going to be brightly colored I haven't said exactly how it's going to look because I don't even know what the product is at this point okay but I do know that my target market that I investigated earlier likes those sorts of things and they like things to be a bit sophisticated so it's got to be interesting but we don't want it to be too childish Right, we don't want to be silly looking um, and I'm going to do that I'm going to check that by doing a customer survey and checking that it meets the style requirements and that's a preference test or it's some sort of some sort of profiling test easy to do 10 seconds job next one cost it will be less than 25 pounds to purchase it, that's different from cost to make when we're purchasing something we're normally paying at least twice as much as the product is cost to make so that would be 12 pound 50 to make I wanted to get £25 as my target amount because that's what a typical household might be able to spend. Or if you said to granny or your auntie or your uncle or whatever, I want a gift for my, my son or daughter, um, that's a reasonable price to pay for someone's birthday present, I think £25. Um, so, a, so a gift gives me a bit of a bracket to work with. And it means that I've got to keep my costs down. £25 is not very expensive. Okay, um, I'm going to test that by doing a spreadsheet with the material costs and I'm also going to take into account some projections about time because don't forget when we make products we have to earn a living and we have to take some labor costs into account so I will do a spreadsheet that costs it out then we're on to market it'll be suitable for five to seven year olds but when they're supervised so that's expecting that they're cooking with their parents and the reason that I've done that is because they're the intended user. And I've just linked back to my previous research. Okay, I'm going to do that with observation of it in use. Now they might come into my workshop, or I might go and visit them in their homes to test it in use. Right, then I'm on to environment. Now I do two things: environment is where it's used, but also environmentally friendly. So I do um, it's got two E's here. Really, uh, I want it to be made from durable materials, and I want it to be environmentally friendly where possible. Okay, there's nothing wrong with using polymers if you make a product that lasts for ages and ages and ages and can be recycled. Okay, um, If it's durable, it means that the product lifespan is going to be extended. It won't break easily. And that automatically makes it more environmentally friendly. Okay, So I've written that in my justification. High quality, not going to be break, not going to break, not going to be disposed of. Okay, I might do some um, destructive testing on it. I might do some drop tests where I send it off the end of a worktop and see if it breaks. Um, and then I'm going to look at the, do some book work to investigate, I'm not sure why I've written this, most environmentally friendly materials. That's going into a textbook or, or an encyclopedia and getting some reference for that, getting some evidence. Um, then my next bit of the environment is where it's going to be used, um, out of the way when not in use. Okay, I think that's really important. It's obviously going to be used on a countertop in a kitchen, on a worktop in a kitchen, but when it's not in use, I think that's almost more important about what we do with it. Um, so somewhere where it's going to be stored out of the way. Um, otherwise it won't be used very often, it will get tucked away in a corner and forgotten about. Um, and I'm giving myself a thinking point there. It might need to fold up, maybe it won't, but I think there's probably a chance that I need to try and keep it a bit compact. And that leads me into some investigation I'll need to do about folding mechanisms maybe. Right. To find out how big or how, how small might store it, I'm going to go and ask some people. How big is your kitchen? How many cupboards have you got? Have you got any spare space? Um, and that will help me to work that out. Next, I expect, my gut feeling is that I'm going to want to put it in a drawer. All right, so I think I'm going to make sure it can fit into the size of a standard kitchen unit drawer. Okay, typical kitchen. So I'm going to need to research those sizes and I'm going to do some measuring. That's how I'm going to test it. All right, that's an easy one to work out. So we're working, broadly speaking, on a drawer size. I might decide that's not right once I've, once I've done some research, but I'll give it a go. Right, it's going to be designed. This is safety, safety of children in mind. Now, any product hopefully is safe for any person, but specifically when you're working with children, you need to do a little bit of extra work to keep things um, to keep things safe because they do the daftest things. All right, um, and also we want to encourage them to do risky things. We want them to to use some sharp equipment or some electrical equipment, um, but we need to manage that risk. 
So that's going to be part of it. It's going to be a very big part of this project is managing risk, keeping things safe. All right. I think for me, the testing of that is going to be the observation in place. Then I'm going to use it to um, the function of the product really is to organize equipment and prevent accidents. That means that um, what's going to happen is that people will be able to use it without doing anything daft. So that's probably a place for things, a place that organizes stuff, a place where everything can be put. Um, and it means that they're going to be able to cook safely and enjoy it, which is going to encourage healthy lifestyles. Okay, I'm going to get people to review models, again, probably in the workshop, um, or I might take it to their, their home or send it home with them test it in place. And then finally, what materials? Gut feeling, stainless steel or bamboo. I think my prototype in reality is probably going to be made from aluminium instead of stainless steel because I can work on that more easily. Um, that's if I'm making it out of that. Uh, bamboo, again I might use bamboo, I might, might have to modify it using some plywood or some pine in my prototype if I can't get hold of bamboo, but the intended final product will be made from probably those materials. That might change as I design. Okay, the key point is hygienic and environmentally friendly. Okay, and I'll test that at the end against my product specification and my evaluation. Okay, so remember, if you look at this this middle column here, this is about justification and giving reasons why. And always link back to your original design context. Okay, so that hopefully would be enough to get you um, close to the ten marks. The more justification and linking better. I will all the way throughout this design project be linking back to this specification but I'll be writing more specific points as I go as well um, because although this specification is, is one of one part of the project it doesn't end here it will change based on research and, and you need to be marked according to what your specific points are as you go through the project including how it's manufactured and sizes. All right. so good luck with that. Um, I'll just finish I'll go back for a second to our um, assessment criteria for this, okay, comprehensive, that's thorough, design brief which justifies, that gives reasons for the target market, the user, and the design brief context that the exam board has given you, okay. Specification is a high level of justification, giving reasons, and helps you with your next bit of designing, okay, that's the top band, there's no reason why you can't get that, providing you're justifying the giving reasons, okay. So, good luck with that.